thank you for joining me today. Praise God, this is a good day. My scripture, favorite scripture, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I've made a choice that I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Are you making that choice this morning? Praise God, it's a good day to give God some praise. Did he wake you up this morning? Are you in your right mind? It's a good day to give him praise. I give him praise in everything I give him praise. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continue to be in my mouth. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Well, this morning, as always, I want to take a few minutes to let you know how much I love you, I miss you, and that I'm continually praying for you and your families during these times, stressful times and difficult times, challenging times, praise God, the COVID numbers are going up, praise God, and I'm praying for you, hallelujah, praise God. I want to let you know that the progress on the church is coming on very well, praise God, and the favor, the favor, the favor, oh my God, the favor, favor we have been having during this process. So stay with us, praise God. We'll be in the church very, very soon, praise God. And I want to thank you for all your prayers and continue to pray for us as we finish the project. Praise God, praise God. I want to continue to encourage you, saints, to trust God. Trust God during this pandemic. As I said earlier, the numbers are going up, praise God, praise God. But I encourage you, continue to trust God. Also, continue to pray for our president and all those that are in authority on a national, state, and local level. Pray, saints, that they, they make good decisions, right decisions during this time. Hallelujah. Continue to pray for our nation. Pray, as I always say, if there ever was a time we need to pray, it's right now. It's praying time. The prayers of the righteous are barely much. Praise God. So continue to pray, saints. And as believers, the last thing we want to do is panic. But the first thing we will do is pray. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. And as always, I declare that we are walking, not walking in fear, but we are walking in favor. And we are victorious. We are victorious. We shall come out victorious. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, before we get into the word of God this morning, word of encouragement, let us pray. Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for being with me and for being for me. Holy Spirit, I ask, I yield myself to you, spirit, soul, and body. I'm your instrument, your vessel, your bond slave, your servant. However you desire to use me on today, I purpose to be sensitive to your leading, your guiding, your unction, and your voice. I purpose not to grieve, vex, quince, or quiet you, but allow you to flow freely in my life and fulfill the perfect will of God. All of you, None of me, not my will, but thine, your way, not mine. I decrease in order that you will live. I die in order that you will live, Father. Thank you, Father, for filling me with all the fullness of your being unto me, according to your word. Holy Spirit, ask you to breathe the life, the breath of life on the words that come out of my mouth today that are aligned with God's word, so they may have an impact and cause pain. Pray and Praise God and cause change. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Father, I give you all the glory, I give you all the honor, and I give you all the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. Praise God, praise God. Well, saints, this morning I would like to talk to you on this subject. Count it all joy. Hallelujah. Count it all joy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Webster defines joy as intense happiness, great delight, gladness, pleasure, rejoicing, jubilation, and shout. Hallelujah. Count means to enumerate, to consider, and to evaluate. Praise God. Let's go to Galatians. Galatians, the fifth chapter. Galatians, the fifth chapter, 22nd and the 23rd verses. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meat, temperance. Against there is no, such there is no law. Praise God, praise God. This passage says that the second fruit 
of the Spirit is joy. I learned that the word joy appears nearly 200 times in the Bible. Oh, my God. Which tells me and lets me know and helps us to understand how important this second fruit of the Spirit is. It is a fruit that we all should have operated in our lives. When we choose to allow the Holy Spirit to reign in our hearts, we see joy as one of the fruits of the Spirit. Praise God, praise God. Joy is a strong feeling of happiness. But there is a distinction between joy and happiness. Joy is a supernatural emotion in the life of a believer in spite of the circumstances. Woo, isn't that good? Happiness, on the other hand, is based on how you feel, it's based on your condition, and it's based on your comfort. Praise God. Listen to these statements. I thought they were good. Praise God. Listen, listen, listen. Joy is in the heart, but happiness is on the face. Woo, my God, my God. Joy is deliberate and intentional. But happiness is undetermined and accidental. Mm. Joy is constant, but happiness is fickle. It can be present for weeks on end, then all of a sudden, in an instant, it's gone. Joy is perpetual and lasting, but happiness is temporary. Joy is internal, but happiness is external. Joy is an inner feeling, but happiness is an outward expression. Isn't that good? Joy is not an emotion that's based on your condition, but an emotion based on your position. Woo! Let me say that again. What's your position? Let me say that again. Joy is not an emotion that's based on your condition, but an emotion that's based on your position. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Joy is something that the world has the ability, has no ability to give us and no power to take away. Woo, let me say that again. Let me say that again. Joy is something the world has no ability to give us and no power to take away. This joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy I have. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. This joy I have. Glory. Hallelujah. The world didn't give it to me. This joy I have. The world didn't give it to me. This joy I have. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ooh, I feel the anointing in this room right now. Hallelujah. Saints, this joy we have, the world can't take it from us. The world can't give it to us and the world can't take it away. Hallelujah. Praise God. Saints, joy is based on what you know. You have to know what the word of God says. Joy cometh by hearing the word. Let me say that again. Joy cometh by hearing the word of God. Hallelujah. For you to maintain strong joy, you have to stay in the word of God. Praise God. Listen at this statement. The level of your joy is directly proportional to the word of God that's in you. Let me say that again. The level of your joy is directly proportional to the word of God that is in you. Hallelujah. A wordless life is a joyless life. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. No word, no joy. Little word, little joy. Much word, much joy. Woo! Isn't that good? It's directly proportional to the word of God in you. You can count the tests and trials as joy when you have an understanding of God's word. Praise God. Saints, one of the hardest lessons we have to learn is to count it all joy. And it's not easy. Ooh, you hear this phrase many times, numerous times throughout this message. Count it all joy. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, let's turn to James. James, the first chapter. James, chapter 1, 
verse 2 and 3. James chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. Praise God, praise God. And you have it. James chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. Brother, my brother, and count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Ooh, listen to what the New International Version says. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the test of your faith develops perseverance. Woo, hallelujah. Now listen at the New Living Translation. This is good. This is good. Dear brothers and sisters, whenever trouble comes your way, let it be an opportunity for joy. Woo, hallelujah. But with your faith, when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Saints, count it all joy. Hallelujah. Praise God. Count it all joy is a divine command. It's not a suggestion. It is a command. What does James mean when he says count it all joy? The term count simply means to consider James did not merely say count it all joy, but he says we should consider testing trials as joy. Hallelujah. The concept here is we are to consider what we're going through as a matter of joy. Woo! Not because the thing itself is something that is pleasurable, but because tribulation worketh patient in us. Hallelujah. We can count all things joy because God is working in all situations, he's working behind the scenes, praise God, even in the most painful situation. Woo, glory to God. What James means is that in the midst of tests and trials, we are to make a conscious and deliberate decision to see them, them as an occasion for joy. Not because they're good, but because of the good that God can produce through them. Hallelujah. The word count. Also is a financial term. It means to evaluate. What, when James says to count it all joy, he encourages the readers to evaluate the way they look at tests and trials. Tests and trials are part of the Christian experience, saints. Praise God. That's just it. We're going to have tests and trials. Praise God. But to count it all joy, when you face trials, tests and trials, we must evaluate the difficulties in life with our eyes of faith. Glory. Hallelujah. Our joy must be based on looking to God, keeping our eyes on him, keeping our focus on him. This is exactly what Jesus did. Glory to God. He was able to endure the cross because of the joy that was set before him according to Hebrews, the 12th chapter and the second verse. He was able to endure, praise God, the cross because of the joy Praise God. That's found in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, and the second verse. We, too, must realize that the suffering we endure in this life cannot compare, ooh, hallelujah, with the joy that is laid up in heaven for us. Isn't that good news? Ooh, glory to God. Of course, this joy comes by faith. Now, you got to have faith. Faith for it. Praise God. James didn't say that it was a joy to have tests and trials. He said to count it joy. Praise God. Let me say that again. He didn't say that it was a joy to have tests and trials, but he said to count it joy. I like to say it this way. When you're going through difficult times, turn your joy up. Woo turn your joy up. Saints, glory to God. Turn your joy up. You have to go after joy in the good times. Go after joy in the bad times. Go after joy in hard times. Go after joy in challenging times. Go after joy, saints. Hallelujah. Why are you in the midst of tests and trials? Let's make, we are in the midst of tests and trials. Let's make every effort to choose joy. Praise God. Joy is a choice. Listen at that statement. It's very true. Joy is a choice. Joy does not simply happen to us. It's a choice. We have to choose joy, and we have to keep choosing joy. Appropriating the joy of the Lord is a matter of choice. Regardless of what you're facing, you are as joyful as you choose 
to be. Isn't that good? Ooh, saints choose to be joyful even in spite of your circumstances. Choose to be a joyful Christian, not periodically, but consistently. Hallelujah. That means we must count it all joy now and not just when it feels joyful or when you feel joyful. James is saying to us when we come under attack, the smartest thing we can do is stay joyful. Hallelujah. One of the most important characteristics, the right attitude, is to remain joyful. Re maintain your joyful attitude, saints, no matter what the devil is trying to do to you in your life. Maintain your joyful attitude. I'm going to be honest with you. Praise God. You're not always going to feel joyful. I don't always feel joyful. I have marvelous opportunity to not feel joyful. Praise God. You may say, I don't have anything to be joyful about. Well, let's see what Habakkuk had to say about this. Praise God. Go to Habakkuk. Habakkuk, the third chapter. Habakkuk. Praise God. The third chapter, verses 17 and 18. Habakkuk. Glory to God. We'll find it. It's in the Old Testament there. Habakkuk, the third chapter, 17 and the 18th verses. It says the 17th verse says, Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive tree shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Praise God. Woo, but listen, listen at verse 18. Hallelujah. Woo, I'm going to shout now. Oh, hallelujah. Yet, hallelujah. Habakkuk said, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will join in the God of my salvation. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? Here is a clear picture of how to count it all joy. Hallelujah. When circumstances around you are negative. Hallelujah. Praise God. In this passage, the Hebrew word for rejoice means to jump up for joy. Jump for joy. To feel and show great delight. Hallelujah. Habakkuk lists all these things that are empty and despair and of sorrow. The fig tree not blossoming. No fruit on the vine. The olive is not being produced. The, the fruit is not, the field is not yielding food. The flocks are being cut off. No herds in the stalk. Praise God. Habakkuk says in the middle of emptiness, in the middle of barrenness, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. Are you joyful this morning? Praise God. It's easy to praise God when everything is going well. But what about the situation with, listen to Habakkuk, all those things were going on with him. Praise God. Negative. All stuff was going on. But the text describes uh, yet uh, Habakkuk's condition. But yet Habakkuk says, I will rejoice in the Lord. Saints, we're going to rejoice in the Lord. No matter what comes our way, we're going to rejoice. Habakkuk determined to rejoice in the Lord. Even when everything in his life was going wrong. Praise God. He determined to rejoice in the Lord despite the visible circumstances. Despite your visible circumstances, say, rejoice, rejoice, rejoice in the Lord. Choose to rejoice in the Lord even when everything in your life is going wrong. Even though Habakkuk suffered extreme loss, he was determined to rejoice in the Lord. In other words, he was determined to praise God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Rejoice in me. Praise. Give God some praise. When you're going through, begin to praise God. Hallelujah. Praise him, God. Praise him before you go. Praise him after the battle. Hallelujah. Give him some praise. Help me to say, along with her back of this morning, saints, yet I will rejoice. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Saints, let's learn to rejoice and count it all joy, just like Habakkuk. Woo, isn't that good? Isn't that good? Praise God. The Apostle Paul had many, many, many opportunities in his life that didn't seem very joyful. He was persecuted. He was stoned. He was beaten. He was shipwrecked. But you know what? Those things didn't move Paul. 
He kept his joy because he was, it wasn't based on the things that he was going through, but it was based on his experience and his position with the Lord. Paul urged the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians, verse 5, chapter 5, verse 6. 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 6. 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 6. And he was telling the Thessalonians, rejoice forevermore. Hallelujah. The New International Version says, be joyful always. Glory to God. Oh, my God, my God. Regardless of your circumstances, saints, let's rejoice ever forevermore. That's why Paul was able to encourage us. He's encouraged us in Philippians, the fourth chapter and the fourth verse. Philippians. The fourth chapter and the first verse. Let's go to Philippians. The fourth chapter and the fourth verse. Praise God. It is a wonderful. Ooh, I love it. I love it. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I said rejoice. Woo! Twice in that verse, he said rejoice. Glory to God. The New International Version said rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Woo! Isn't that good? Praise God. The New Living Translation says, Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again. Rejoice. Hallelujah. Saints, rejoice, 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 rejoice. Paul didn't say rejoice most of the time. He said to rejoice always. Hallelujah. Praise God. Paul wrote this book. A Philippians when he was in jail in the underground jail, praise God. And yet, Paul said that he was full of joy. Paul could rejoice because he made a decision to rejoice. And he was determined to be joyful in all things. Saints, are you making a decision to, be, to rejoice? Make a decision to determine that you're going to be joyful in all things. It's not easy. Praise God. You got to do it by faith. Hallelujah. He didn't say that everything was always going to be wonderful. Oh, everything was always going to be great. Paul knew the power that comes from rejoicing in the Lord. Our joy is not based on the rising and falling of the gas prices. It's not based on the stock market. Our joy is not based on whether we live in a big house, whether we live in a little house. None of these things matter. When we know who our God is and that the joy of the Lord is our strength, we can continue to rejoice. Hallelujah. We can rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Woo! Glory to God. Praise God. That's found in 1 Peter, the first chapter, and the eighth verse, the middle part of that verse. Praise God. The last part of that verse, it says, we can rejoice Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Peter says, joy unspeakable, hallelujah, and full of glory. Hallelujah. How can we rejoice in the Lord always? Well, let's go to this familiar scripture. We can rejoice in the Lord always because Philippians, the fourth chapter and the eighth verse. Philippians, fourth chapter, verse eight. Philippians, fourth chapter. Verse 8. It's a familiar script. It says, Finally, my brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are a good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. We can be joyful when we think on things are lovely, things on joyful, on pure things, Things on lovely things, things of a good report, praise God. The Mrs. Bible says we are to think on the best and not the worst. Praise God. When it said think on these things, the Mrs. Bible says we're to think on the best, not the worst. Joy is to be constant in your lives, saints, no matter what's going on. Praise God. We are commanded, commended to be joy, to be glad, to rejoice, and shout for joy in happy times. Shout for joy. In sad times, shout for joy. In comfort and difficult, shout for joy. We find joy in the presence of the Lord. Praise God. Notice Paul did not say rejoice when everything is going well. When you have plenty of money in the bank. When your body is well. When your marriage is strong. 
on. No, he said rejoice no matter what's going on. Hallelujah. Faith, saints, and that takes faith. I keep reiterating that point. It takes faith to do this. Hallelujah. Paul stressed thinking on good things and not to focus on bad things. You have to train yourself to do this. Praise God. And you have to do it by faith. We must remain joyful. And I know it's not always easy. But don't base your faith, your joy, on your sickest circumstances. Say, count it all joy. Hallelujah. How you may be thinking, how can I be full of joy? And all these things, bad things that are happening around me. Praise God. But remember, I made the statement, joy is constant. God's word describes joy as full and complete. John, the 15th chapter. Let's go to John, the 5th, St. John, the 15th chapter and the 11th verse. St. John, the 15th chapter and the 11th verse. Praise God, praise God. It says, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. The New International Version says, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Praise God. So joy is full and complete. God wants us to have a full tank of joy. Rejoice regardless of what's happening on around us. He wants us to have a full tank of joy. Not a half a tank, not a quarter tank, not almost empty. He wants us to have a full tank of joy. Ooh! Decide right now that you will rejoice no matter 
What? Praise God, praise God. Woo, this is my favorite scripture, favorite, one of my favorite. Psalms 118, verse 24. Psalms 118, verse 24. This is my favorite. I open up with it every time I'm medicine. Praise God, praise God. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Woo! You can rejoice when testing trials come because it's the testing that builds your endurance. Praise God. You can rejoice because God said the testing trials of your faith will cause you to become come out like pure gold. Woo! Glory to God. You can come out like as pure, pure gold. Praise God. I don't care what's going on, saying, I'm determined. I've cho I made a choice that I'm going to rejoice. I don't care what's happening. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. I will rejoice. Praise God. Whatever it is that it is that you are going through, they choose to count it all joy. You can't do it in your own strength. I can't do it in my own strength. We can't do it in our, but hook up to God's strength. Praise God. With God, we can do all things. Praise God. Through Christ, which strengthens us. The circumstance that you are facing today may not be job for saying. But Nehemiah, the 8th chapter and the 10th verse. Nehemiah, the 8th chapter and the 10th verse. The middle of that verse, that chapter, that verse is Nehemiah, the 8th chapter, verse 10. Praise God. It says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Glory to God. Praise God. Sorrow and sickness may be present, but the joy of the Lord is your strength. When you have joy, you got strength. Woo! Listen, 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, God. Forgiveness. 
You said in Romans 10 and 9 that if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead, I shall be saved. At this very moment, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart. Praise God and I accept Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior according to your word, Father God. Right now, I am saved. Praise God. Amen. Welcome to the family. Glory to God. Well, saints, it's been good. It's been good. As you can see, I just, it was off the chain. I enjoyed myself. Praise God. Counting it all joy. Glory to God. I cover you and each one of your, your family members in the blood of Jesus in Psalms 91. I declare that no plague should come down your dwellings. But the Lord should give his angels charge over you and your families to keep you in all your ways. Ways. A thousand shall fall at your side, ten thousand right hand. But it shall not come now. you. Praise God. Remember, saints, count it all joy. Praise God. Let me bless you. Praise God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May make his face to shine up you on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And give you peace, grace, mercy, peace, and the favor of God be multiplied unto you. Well, have a blessed day. Have a blessed week. And thank you so much for tuning in. God.